we have to learn the analysis. First of all, the analysis of our own history to compare it and to make clear where we missed the way. I tell you frankly, if we want to remain a nation, we have to change paradigm. Why? And probably these words are very strong into your face just in the beginning. But this is the very clear analysis of mine. If you see after the 17th century, maximum 18th century, the Roma who before were welcomed by different governments and kings and Caesars and so on, they were welcomed because their knowledges were very much needed. I'm deeply convinced that the knowledge how to make gunfires like cannon was brought into Europe by Roma. What does it mean? Europe, its development can cushion me to, to how to say, to be grateful for it to Roma. But we always have this mimicry. And we never explained that we are Roma. And it was at that time, and it's also this time. Why am I so brave to say such important words and such great sentences? Because if you analyze when it was as the Roma groups, or most of them arrived to Europe, it was in the same time as Europe slowly but surely began to go to America to fight with these gunfires. And these two, you can find also on pictures, in very different. One type of pictures you can find the cannons used also on ships. And on the other pictures, you can find some very strange pictures about Roma. Okay, but when we see our culture and the characteristic of our culture, it was based always on the modernity. Am I right? Yes or not? Modernity, it means to work always for the market, to know exactly where are niches, which the majority, which the market needs. And those Roma who were able to go with the mainstream always answer these needs always had to find out what to create, on which methods, how to fulfill the needs of the market. Okay, and you can ask me and well, where we lost the way. As Gutenberg came. Yeah. Because until then, the methods how to give forward the knowledges were based on families. The father teach the son, the mother teach the daughters, and they knew, they learned. 
they learn roles. As by the Roma communities until today, it works. Am I right? Yes. Because the mother have to, has to care the children from one side, but she and also the whole community knows very clearly which roles have to fulfill a, guy, a, a, a son and which roles have to fulfill a girl. It means that uh, I'm afraid to say it into the eyes of Fred. Instead of paternalists, our societies are <coughs> absolutely different and are based on matriarchat. Yes. Until today, <coughs> the most important figure in the families are the women. <coughs> And every single fault, it's our. And we lost. But we can win. If we will be able. So, again, the most important characteristic of the Romanic culture is this sensitivity market ability and the very, very modern knowledges. And it worked until centuries. <clears throat> the methods of how to teach everything for the next generation was very personal, very familiar, very close. But at the same time, Gutenberg came. The printing and the books came. And instead of this very close, very personal knowledge forwarding, came the school system. And Roma made a big distance. They did not let the children into the gacho schools. They used the old methods of teaching. <coughs> and we lost. It's very simple. With these old methods, we lost. Which can give us some hope. It's again the new technology and the new methods of communication, the modernity. Why? Because of the technology. It's based on kuju, on mobiles, on iPads, on media, on visual, and I can tell you also art. Because it's very easy to teach the next generation to use these tools. And instead of always sitting with a book, only some minutes they need. OK, I am asking. Who knows better to use the iPad and the mobile, let's say Android, you or your child? Children. Your children. <laughs> and by you, who is the better? You or your children? In using this new technology. Your children. Am I right? So this is a new phase of our life. The question is now, to which goal are they able to use this new methodology, this new knowledge, the new technology, only for themselves? And I tell 
tell you examples which are crazy. To make selfie nangis yeah. <laughs> without clothes yeah. and to share it. Yes. Or let's say to make interviews with the old people with about the life of their own community and to share it. And let's say to bond together the international Roma communities. And again, if in Miskolc, which is the second biggest city in Hungary, the local authorities try to clean up the Roma settlements, and they, the children or the youth from there, will be able to make hard films, interviews, information, and to share it worldwide. May we organize ourselves and to make, let's say, demonstration? Yes, that's the way how we can change our situation using the most modern technology to be bonded together, to let the borders down, forgotten, and how to say, to give impulses for our children that, yes, they are able to do what all the others can do. And if they use it well, they will, how to say, learn much more easier um, to write, to count, to <coughs> read books by these iPads and so on. So there will be not distances between the knowledges and between the institutions and between the very poor. But of course we do need Wi-Fi. And we do need also apparatus, tools to it. Are we able, how to say, to, to catch up, to explain very clearly in our own community that that's the way how we can go forward and to make understand the majority, yes, we don't want to be isolated. We go on the mainstream way. You always are speaking about the differences between the Gajo and Roma. It's time to recognize the parallels. And again, if you analyze in pictures, in I don't know, in, in uh, art, how they were speaking about Roma, you will see again this, they are different. They are something very, very new, very strange, very, very, very. <laughs> and you will never find the philosophy of the Roma. And again, why? <coughs> Ask it always. Again and again, why? Because as we lost this development process, as we did not follow the majority's school system way, slowly but surely we became national security question for countries. An army who can work, very hard, unpaid, and uh, I don't know, unrespected work for less money, 
than any other. But we have to be carefully with them because they are strange, they are very different, they are very, very. And only for those, how to say, uh, works the way another type, who makes this mimicry? Not to show that they are Roma, but to follow the mainstream. And now what I try to tell you, it's time to open the files, to say yes. On big days, even family days or even collective days, holidays, on the holidays, we wear very special, very Roma clothes. We have very Roma costumes, but in all the other days, we are living on the same standard as the majority. We want on development on the same uh, way, and we are mainly the same. What does it mean to understand the philosophy of us? <coughs> what we... So, if you analyze how the majority and the so-called Roma specialists are speaking about us, we have all this health situation, educational situation, I don't know, uh, housing situation, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on. They are speaking about us as about a two, as about a piece of three. We are objects of their researches. We aren't subjects. <laughs> we aren't partners for them. And this is the methods how they, how to say, they make tools from us, instrumentalize us. And what we want, we want the development to become their partners. And to this we have to show our philosophy. And I don't want now to show you all those pieces which I found very, very important in our philosophy, but only some. See, this old sentence, <coughs> if they give you, take it. If they beat you, run. Ha adnak, magyarul tudnak itt sokan. Ha adnak, fogadd el, ha ütnek, szaladj el. It's in Hungarian. I translated because I, as I felt there are some. Is it a, how to say an order for us? Am I right? I don't see. Please tell it in Swedish. Probably they will better understand it. Ha ütnek, nem, ha adnak, fogadd el, ha ütnek, szaladj el. Does it exist for us until today? Yes. yes. Absolutely. This is why the Romanian, the Bulgarian, the Hungarian, Roma did not remain on their own place, did not fight for their own human rights, but are here and there in French, in Italy, in Canada. Not because they want to, how to say, to develop because of the school of Canada, I don't know, or because uh, the 
very good social system or social care system. Oh no, because of their philosophy and they were beaten up and they left. Please show it with art, with words, and raise up self-consciousness, awareness. It's time to change, also from this philosophy. It's time to change, to catch up the mainstream philosophy that we are human beings, we do not want more than the others, but those minimums to be respected as a human being, yes, of course, and this is the base of what we can build a common mainstream ideology and also activity. This is the very first. There are some sentences which are very, very important between Roma. Yes, bravo. Please translate it. We make the money. Money doesn't make us. So we make the money, not the money make us. Money goes round. What does it mean? That in the majority society, the main, how to say, um, philosophy is the ownership. The money and the ownership. Instead of this philosophical ground and, and ground of the society, for the Roma, it's important, just on the same place, we are sisters and brothers, we are a collectivity, and we have to feel us good. If my brother faces problems, I can't feel myself good. If other belonging to my community faces difficulties, I can't be happy and, and I don't know what. I care. Because I'm also a member of, those, of, of that community. I shared here only two small pieces analyzing our traditions, culture, and way of thinking. But let me please to explain you from my own expertise how I try to, to came over. Um, in, so, I am coming from Hungary, and I was raised up in, in socialist time, where, uh, as a philosophy of Hungary, there were these three T. Do you know what I mean? The first one, tiltot, uh, forbidden. The middle one, turt, tolerated. And the third one, tamogatot, sponsored. And in this system, if you see where the Roma were, You are coming from Hungary, where the Roma were? Yeah. Outside, yeah. for them, them say, outside. No, no. Ah. Forbidden. Mm. Forbidden as we had no minority rights. Not only collective, not, but also personal, not? 
and it was forbidden to speak Romanesque. Uh, before? Yes, yes, in socialist time. Until, I don't know, until 70s, 80s, when there were some schools, when it happened that the children were speaking between each other Romanes using their mother tongue, they were fined by the teacher. They were fined. And it was forbidden to speak Romanes. On the national level, there were so-called scientists who wrote books and articles that the Romani language can't be used for um, real communication as it has only 1,200 words. Since then, and again, without any sponsorship or, or uh, toleration. No, no. I will go forward. Okay. <coughs> so, Karu Ibari, the greatest poet and folklorist of us, who more than 40 years long collected Romani paramisi, fairy tales, and songs, collected more than 40,000 Romani words. Compare with 1,200. But Bari never became professor, never became awarded by his uh, absolutely great work, but those professors who denied that we have a culture and language became. In 78, as I finished um, the university and became a um, cultural manager or adult educator with one profession and, and Hungarian language and uh, literature teacher with the other profession, we already had some expertise how to make movement. At the same time as the Hungarian movement dance house uh, were begin by Shebuk, Halmos, also Pimpikan. We created Romani folklore groups. Uh, does it sense uh, known the name of Kaliag, Kaliag group, yes. Kaliag ensemble. Of course. Uh -huh. So in, in the beginning from 78 until 84, the leader of this group was Janusz Barsoin, my husband. And also me participated telling fairy tales and very often Romanes. There are probably some people who remember this phase. How to go forward? This was the next question because everybody knew that the Roma are able to dance and sing. And in 79, we decided to organize the ever first fine art exhibition. <coughs> this one. What we try to do with this? Show it and forward. To break into the field of the so called elite culture, to mainstream, we collected about 12, 14 Romani artists who went on the Andeleski Burma, Sarkene Sandlitska. On his path. On his path. On his path, on the path of Janusz Balazs, 
who was the very first uh, painter, he began to paint as he was more than 60. So like in my age, I began to work and I, I give for me four, five, six more and, and he became worldwide known. Why again? Because of his talent and philosophy, of course. Um, again, to use the mainstream. This was the, the third one. <laughs> sorry. Later on, okay. Sorry, sorry. So, in 89, we organized the second one, and in 2000, the third one. And since 2007, as Timea organized the Roma Pavilion, we are thinking that now it's mainstreamed. And it can go on their own way. <coughs> um, but how can we do this only with institutions? If there isn't any institution in the background, you will fall. The Hungarian Institute for Culture and Art was the background. And until today, there isn't any other. And unfortunately, also this institution does not work more for us. I'm freelancer, and in the institute there aren't any other who organize their Romani culture, unfortunately. So it's time to make an international institution, I know, <laughs> to have the chance permanently to influence the mainstream and for young people to open the way. Thank you. <laughs>